Hey, what's up and welcome to Hack My Growth. Today we're going to be talking about 10 search behavior statistics that you need to know. All right, let's go. Are you looking to grow your business but you're not sure where to start? That's where we come in. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe been watching a while and you have not yet become a subscriber, please do so now. We create new content each and every week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. So like I said in the opener, we're gonna be talking about 10 search behavior statistics that are extremely important for anybody who is marketing online and really wanting to leverage search engines to drive targeted traffic to their website. So this is really important because one, when you're in a niche that you want to understand how people behave, knowing how they look for answers has a direct impact on your search strategy. And also over the last few years, there's been major shifts in how people use search engines, you know, with Google moving to mobile first indexing with the rise in mobile app search, uh, the rise in voice search. There's a lot of different things changing. So assuming that it's been the same way over the last, you know, two, three, four, five, ten years is, is a huge mistake. Now, while the fundamentals are still extremely important, we have to understand behavior because that's the whole goal behind Hummingbird and semantic search is user intent. And so some of these statistics, I hope will help Help you understand a little bit broadly of how people are searching and then you'll need to go a little bit deeper into your specific niche to understand exactly how the people you're targeting uh, are deviating maybe from the mean or the norms so the first one is 49 percent of all searches now result in no click so as we know that google has expanded rich features they've expanded uh, different sort of uh, call outs inside of the SERP results so this is actually caused less people to click on links in the search engines. So they're going there, they're seeing the information they need, and they continue on. Now this is a pretty uh, substantial change since 2016, about 12% increase. And uh, as you can see, this does impact search, and this makes you know ranking for those you know SERP features extremely important. The second statistic we're looking at is that organic search outnumbers paid nearly 12 to 1. So click-through rates may be down overall, on organic, but still they get more clicks than the paid do. So they have dropped substantially in the last couple of years uh, as Google's placed more emphasis on driving obviously paid traffic because that's what they get paid for. But at the same time, organic is still trusted. Users still click the organics 12 to one compared to the ad results. Number three is the results with featured snippets actually get slightly higher click through rate than those without them. Now, this was debated quite a bit earlier this year in 2020 when Google made the shift of how it's going to display links with featured snippets. Now, what a lot of people were concerned is that do featured snippets get the kind of traffic that a position one would get? Now, the exact numbers were 39.6% click-through rate for results with featured snippets as opposed to 37% with the results without them. So they did notice that positions one and two were lower click-through rates than the average, but the remaining positions three through 10 are getting much higher. So when there is a featured snippet, there is an uplift in the organic click-through rate. Number four, YouTube receives more than 6% of desktop search traffic. YouTube is an extremely powerful platform in search. Yes, it is owned by Google. It's, a, it's also its own search engine. But over on desktop search, when people are looking for content, especially content that uh, is you know recommending a video, YouTube uh, massively overperforms its raw visibility. And it, it gets about 6% of dex desktop search traffic, which is pretty powerful um, especially if you are leveraging video, YouTube is a great platform to be on. Google does have a bias towards YouTube, which makes sense. They own the platform. So this is an area of what you can invest in and also look to see if your audience is searching uh, for video results, because if they are, you can create targeted content and that can also rank in search. Number five, Google owns the top three search engines in the US. So as you can see, this is done by Moz and JumpShot. Rand Fiskin did this. This was done in 2016, uh, but it's still pretty relevant data today. The numbers may be slightly different, but they're, uh, the order is, is still there. Google.com, Google Images, and then YouTube. Those are the top three search engines right now in the US. If you're targeting people in the US, you need to make sure that one, your site's visible on Google, two, that you're optimizing your images, and three, that you're investing in YouTube if you haven't done so already. All those combined, you can see, are dominating how people search in the US. Nearly 25% of search volume actually happens outside the top 1 million keywords. 
So you've got top keywords, very important keywords, right? Maybe broad keywords that are highly competitive, but long tailed is still extremely effective and there's a ton of search to be gained using a long tailed approach. Long tailed tends to be more targeted. It tends to be more focused on user intent and 25% of all search volume, which is billions and billions and billions happens outside the top 1 million keywords. So when you're looking at your strategy, yes, you can target broad terms. It's not a problem, but really what you want to do is focus more niche, focus on the problems that your specific customer is searching. There's new keywords being searched every single day. So this is an important thing for us to understand that long tailed is still very much alive. Roughly 8% of Google search queries are questions. Now for me, I would have thought this was going to be higher, honestly. Um, but terms like, you know, who, what, where, when, why, how, uh, when they did the research on this, they found that about 8%, slightly below 8% of all search queries are phrased as questions. So I think this really comes out of us being taught how to search um, a long time ago for many of us. I think this might change. I think we'll see this increase over the next couple of years, especially with voice search and uh, just new generations using search engines. But I, I think we still do a lot of searches by keywords or, or long tailed phrases. And then uh, I definitely do believe that as we move, uh, we're gonna see this rise over the next couple of years. 18% of searches lead to a change in the search query. So what they're saying here is when somebody maybe searches something, uh, but they don't see the results they like, then they shift and change what they are searching for. Uh, this is an interesting behavior because this shows that not all the time, actually um, two out of 10 times a lot of the time, people are changing after they've seen the results because they didn't show what they were expecting. Um, Rand also points out in his study that this is probably why Google has made related searches and people also asked so much more a part of search in the last few years because they've seen this behavior where people go and they type in a keyword, they don't like what they see, so they change it. And that's a large amount of, of people, 18%, you're thinking of all the people using Google, uh, they're gonna want to make sure that those people are getting their answers as quickly as possible. Number nine is an interesting one. We've got 21% of searches led to more than one click in the results. So this is more than one out of five searches on the internet. People are either opening up multiple tabs and comparing them and trying to find the right answer, or they're clicking back and clicking on another link. So this is important to know that just because you're owning a position or maybe somebody's higher than you doesn't mean they're always gonna get more click-throughs, especially if your content's better. As, as Google hopefully sees that your content's better, you'll move up. But it's also interesting to note that people are going to be looking, they're searching, they're trying to understand. I think this would probably take place a lot more at that, that top level where people are just trying to educate themselves or investigate a problem. But at the same time, it's something that we need to be aware of because people aren't just clicking the first link, getting their answer and moving on. People are looking through and they're trying to decide which piece of content really meets their needs. And the last one is that Google sends 10 times more traffic than the next leading referrer. So we know about the rise in social, we know about the rise in all these other different forms of marketing and people pushing ads, but the reality is, is Google owns 94% of the US search market and they send 10 times as much traffic as the next leading referrer on the web, which is Facebook. So SEO is still very much alive. And while Google does own a number of these, these websites and these, these, these traffic refers that they're sending to, you know, that'd be images or, or, or uh, YouTube, the reality is there's still a lot of traffic for us, website owners, business owners to garner from the web. And if you really look at it, most people are using Google. They're using some sort of a Google platform. So it's a place that we need to be. It's a place that we need to optimize for and make sure that we're really, you know, uh, doing what we can to get some of those people coming to our site if, if they meet our our criteria and if they're in our community and in our niche that we're trying to reach out and market to. If you have any questions on the stats that we shared today, I'm going to be posting uh, this to my blog as well with all of the different links to the sources, a uh, number of really great sources that, that helped me put this slide deck together. Please let me know. Comment below on, on anything else that you're seeing. Maybe if there's another statistic that, that you find very interesting, let's keep the conversation going. And until next time, happy marketing. Uh -huh.